welcome back. So um, <laughs> one of the things I was thinking about as we were doing this is I was looking up these rules. Uh, boy, Ameritrash games, you live by the dice and you die by the dice. And that's definitely what's happening with this game. Um, within seconds of me hitting stop, I found it right here. NPCs will avoid asteroid fields, debris fields, planetary shields, and stars. Nebula do not affect them. They can use gates. Uh, they will not scan or take blind jump actions. Um, there's no mention of uh, gravity here because this is the original rule book, which is not where I was looking for it. So um, I'm going to assume that they would avoid the gravity belts too. Um, <clears throat> I think under asteroid fields, in the uh, rule book, it says that they don't trigger the asteroid or the, the comet to move and stuff like that. But anyways, for the respawn, we're going to finish out the round. And then next round, I just respawn with one damage because I'm a tier one ship. It would be two damage if it was a tier two. Uh, I don't lose anything. Uh, I would have lost any cargo I had, which I didn't have anyways. Uh, I get full replenishment. It's as if I landed on the planet. I don't even lose my money. And I don't lose my mission cards. I would have lost my mission cards if it was active, but these are completed. So uh, there's actually no harm done to me. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll roll a d20 to see where we spawn. And I'll explain that when we get there. So uh, we... Um, I believe it's now the merchant's turn. So let's make sure we don't forget to do that. Um, the merchant's next planet it's going to go to after Azor is uh, Kemplar, which it's going to do easy. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So he's taking one of these off the board. And so um, uh, let me uh, make sure. Yep. Okay. So... Now we're at the spot where we have to roll for them. And uh, <laughs> look at this. So I had to jettison two cubes. So that's gonna be plus four. And this is 5,000 um, credits. Uh, so that's gonna be plus 10. So this is plus 14 to their die roll. <laughs> All right, and so I rolled a 19. Of course, uh, 29 and four is 33. They are going to score, I, I need to zoom in for you guys here. Look at this. At a 31 or more, they're gonna score five victory points. And then he gets a sixth one because of the merchant. So uh, nine and six is 15. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, the game's over. I lost, just like that. Um, all I have to say is, wow. <laughs> I just got my butt handed to me. Um, the, uh, hateful AI is a problem. Um, I think if I would have gotten any of these other ones, like this one here, look, for example, all I had to do was get a bounty and then this guy would have ignored me the whole game. So, I mean, it just, uh, there's definitely a lot of, um, there's a lot of luck. There's no, no doubt about it. So I lost miserably. All right. So. Here's how we're gonna do this. Uh, there's a little sheet in the back of the rule book, but I don't like writing on the rule book. I didn't feel like scanning anything, so we're just gonna use this little note card. Okay, so we did the campaign, and uh, all right, so for the first mission, uh, I tried to do expert explorer. And I failed. And I should probably put this over here so you can see outside of my hand. So, um, minus three points is what we get for failing. Okay. Um, obviously, if I get enough minus three points, this may not be a game I could ever catch up. Um, but I get to take one of these upgrades. And here's what's interesting. I wasn't expecting on losing the game so quickly. So just out of curiosity, how would I have respond? Um, 
what I would have done is I would have rolled a d20 and like, for example, that's a one. And then I would have looked at all the spawn numbers for a number one. And I don't know if a number one's on the board. And um, so then let's say the number one's not on the board, which it isn't. Then I would go to two and then I would go to three and actually two is taken. So then I would have spawned here at three. Or I guess I would have spawned next to two. I think, I see, that's another rule thing I'd have to look up. But I think I would have spawned next to two. So I would have spawned here or here. Um, it would have been my choice. Um, so it wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world, I guess. Because uh, then I could have finally landed on a planet and I would have been over nine spaces away from uh, Jerky Jerk over there. And I for sure, I think I really would have tried to get a tier two ship just because I want, I would uh, try to get some some uh, weapons and try to blast the crap out of these guys. But anyways, um, uh, that's just to complete that rule. Okay, so I can get a plus one to each engine use. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. It's just like this little plus two, except uh, it's a permanent plus one. So this would actually, and this plus one lets you go over. So for example, I had a D6 engine and remember how I said you couldn't go above a six? Um, uh, it would have uh, allowed me to go to a seven. So uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I think it's very useful. I just don't know if that's the first one I want to take. And also, by the way, this thing moves around and eventually once it covers a, a particular planet, it would flip over and turn the planet into basically uh, an ice asteroid. And um, in doing so, it destroys everything. Like this merchant could have gotten destroyed. See how he's sitting on the buy space? Um, if it would have moved, because remember it was moving, um, it was moving this way and three spaces were already here. If I would have rolled a five or a six, it would have moved one, two, and then three like that, which still would not have, like it would have moved over the planet, but it would have destroyed the merchant, which actually would have destroyed their ability to score an extra fame point because all of this would have been destroyed. The merchant would have respawned, but it would have respawned with an empty cargo. So I was actually hoping that that was going to work out for us and give us a fighting chance. But the moment that they destroyed me and took my 5,000 bounty, it was over. <laughs> okay, back to this. Plus one to each shield, missile, and blaster use. So if I want to go fighty fighty mixer, fighty McFighterson, um, I could get a plus one to all of them, all three of them. It's, uh, and it's infinite, you know, every time. Uh, that's quite good. I mean, I would have not liked it at all if it was just one of those three, but the fact that it's all three of those, it means that um, we could go a fighty path and, and do quite well for ourselves. Um, I am considering it. Plus three impulse. Now, this is amazing. What this is saying, like right here, I got an impulse of four. This means I can move seven. <laughs> for an impulse. Um, and then the next level is I could heal a damage or gain an energy just automatically. And then for the third one, it's a minor action to, uh, cause that's a regular action. It's a minor action to do that. And I can do two per turn instead. Um, so pretty interesting. Uh, plus three to all mission rolls. So that's, if I have to roll a die for a mission, which I had to do, I get to add plus three to everything. And then uh, this is, uh, that would be minor actions because to, to hand in a mission is an action. So you have to stop your movement to do that. Um, and then this is an interesting one. You can scan from anywhere. So you don't have to be at the edge of the sector. You can just be in the middle of the sector and just scan in any direction. Um, I like it. I just, just, it's just that I have to do three upgrades to get to it. Like that's the one I like the most is that one right there. This one is eight energy to rearm an action. <clears throat> uh, not, it just basically means you get to do an action a second time. You know, that's, that's one of these, right? So um, if I have this, I can spend eight energy and then rearm an action, which would then allow me to take it again, right? So I would actually get to do four movement instead of three. Um, I think it can be powerful. It's more powerful if you're in a tier three ship. And then uh, if you keep upgrading it, right, it becomes five energy and then one. Now you're talking turkey, right? You're just spending one energy to rearm an action. 
You only get to do it once per turn, but that's still, that becomes super powerful. So actually, this is actually a really nice, but this is a uh, long-term investment, right? Um, because we lost so miserably, I want something that's going to help me now. I need to not fall minus nine, right? I can't go minus three, minus six, minus nine before I finally get a skill that can help me. Uh, okay, tier one and two ships, uh, their abilities cost zero. Okay, now what does that mean? That is, um, this ability costs zero anyways, right? Uh, but some of these have an energy cost on them. And so what this is saying is I can use those energy, those abilities that have energy costs, and it costs me zero energy to use them. Then the next upgrade is a tier three ship is zero, and I get a 2,000 discount on tier three ships, which is pretty good. And then the last one is I can, uh, after I get to a tier three ship, I can then upgrade it to a one. So what does that mean? I'm actually downgrading my ship from a tier three to a tier one. But then, uh, this is something you do when you have a ton of money. Because every time you upgrade a ship, you gain a fame point. So I'm basically saying, I'm gonna go to a one and get a fame point. And then I'm gonna go to a two again and get another fame point. And then I'm gonna go back to a three. And then in doing so, I get these, these ability cards, right? So you wanna do this if you're a big ability card whore. Cause, um, you 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 know you get to keep the tier one tier two and tier three ship ability card, and by having that this uh, this upgrade, it allows me to get another tier one ability card and another tier two. Like you can just keep cycling and get a whole bunch of ability cards and basically do every ability in the game if you wanted. Um, I think it's neat, but it seems like a lot of work, and you need a lot of money. And why would I? Why would I go through all this trouble? These ability cards aren't that great, if you ask me. And maybe that's my weakness in this game, is I don't find value in them. Plus one cube from the supply when you do a buy action. So you get to do it twice a turn. So remember, I was able to get two cubes for a buy action. Now I would be able to get three. And then here you get an extra thousand when you sell. And then here you get an extra 2,000 credits at the start of the game. Remember, we're playing hard. We only get 2,000 credits at the start of every mission. I'd be able to get 4,000 at the start of the mission. Okay, I really like this too. Uh, it just needs to be the other way around. I was hoping to get this. Like, I would have taken this in a heartbeat. All right, so how do I help myself now? My honest answer, the only one that helps me now is the plus one to each engine use. That helps me now. This one's nice. And then I can maybe do like some kind of merchant route. This one's nice if you finally own all those things, but I don't own any of those things. That these, Each of these cost money. This one is just super cool, but... Even when I get an upgrade for free, I'm still not sure what to take. I'm leaning towards this, but again, I want the third upgrade. That's what I want. I want the plus 2,000 starting credits. I really think that would be powerful. The plus one to each engine use, though, would help me because it would let me move around the map more. Holy buckets. Um... I'm just so angry at those NPCs. Hunting me down like that. I'm gonna need, like I'm leaning, maybe I wanna do this anyways, just because. Uh, this obviously helps me to run and do missions and collect exploration tokens. I think this is just universally good. I mean, for, for Pete's sakes, this was really good. Right? Um, so why would I not want a plus one? Uh, I want the 2,000 starting credits. It's just that I gotta go through a lot of crap to get there. And yes, this is gonna help me with my merchant ones. So I'm not complaining about it. It's just, I don't know if buying an extra one from supply helps me now. 
that helps me now. So I, I'm gonna have to stick with my guns. And um, so uh, the bonus I'm getting is I'm gonna get plus one to engine. So that's a permanent bonus now uh, for the rest of the campaign. So even though I lost, I got a bonus out of it. Um, so I guess we'll just lick our chops and, and move on. So uh, you already know how setup works. So what I would do is I would just reset my tiles and um, obviously um, we would take these cards and, and shovel them. <laughs> take these cards and shove it. That's what we would do. Uh, we're gonna shuffle them. And uh, so we got the titles here. Uh, these card quality is amazing, by the way. Uh, you don't even have to sleeve them, and they 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 shuffle as if they were like with the Fantasy Flight sleeves. I mean, they're just that good. Um, just love these cards. I can just look at that. I can just shuffle them as if they were sleeved, and uh, so amazing. And they don't have that weird friction those one set of cards had, um, and they uh, they glide nicely. I probably should sleeve them, but uh, anyways, they're. They're super nice. Uh, and then these mission cards, of course, are gonna get shuffled in. Okay. These get flipped back over. These are the uh, progress or the exploration tokens. I'm gonna flip these back over. There are some bad ones, by the way. We didn't actually see any of the bad ones, but there are bad ones out there that like do damage to you and all kinds of stuff. So um, we got those sorted. So the numerator is out, okay? I'm gonna take my uh, numerator skill. We're no longer allowed to play as the numerator. at least not until we've played every other tier one ship. So this particular guy is out. And so I'm gonna just put him over here and up against like that to show that we played the numerator. <coughs> We're back down to 2000 money because we would be starting a new game. <coughs> we don't have to do this mission. We can always pick a different mission next time. And um, obviously the AI is gonna change as well. So the uh, various cards, Scoundrel, Enforcer, and Merchant, uh, we're gonna possibly get different behavior from them in, these, uh, in this next game. Okay, uh, I would have to roll D6 to refresh this board because that's gonna change again. Uh, obviously this clears off. And I'm just gonna put these back. And um, and then that's all you need. So we would have to, uh, we're gonna respawn the tiles. And then we would go through the process of picking our ship and our mission again. And then we're off to the races. So uh, that's it for me for tonight. Uh, I was able to get this first one in. I know it went very slow uh, because we were looking up rules and we were looking up this and we were looking up that. Um, but I believe it's going to go a lot smoother here and out. Um, and, uh, hmm. did I have fun? I, I got my butt kicked. I, I, you know, is that fun to get your butt kicked? Um, no, it's not. Uh, I think what's interesting me about this is that, uh, this is challenging. And so from that perspective, I am satisfied. Uh, I'm sort of tempted to recommend that if you just bought this game, even though the rules say that you're supposed to play hard difficulty, um, maybe you shouldn't do hard difficulty. Um, I know why the rules are saying that, um, but man oh man, is it a challenge. Uh, so, uh, that's it. Uh, I'm gonna try to get some more in tomorrow. I do have a busy schedule tomorrow, um, but I will see what I can do. Uh, you didn't even get to see what a Tier 2 ship or a Tier 3 ship looks like or anything like that. Um, I was spending all my time trying to get uh, fame points through exploration tokens. 
And to be quite honest, it's very painful because I would have rather taken 2,000 money. And then uh, if every one of those, so we did four fame points, that would have been 8,000 bucks. That's an upgrade to a new ship. Um, so uh, a tier two ship, by the way, is only 5,000 credits, not 8,000. I was wrong about that. So I could have upgraded to tier two pretty easily. Um, the tier three ship is 8,000 credits. That's the one that's 8,000. So um, yeah, it is what it is. I think I made a few uh, false assumptions. Uh, I think I picked a, very poorly the opening mission and ship combination. Uh, I think I underestimated how hard it is to get uh, seven points in exploration tokens. Um, so, a couple of things that I was looking for in this game. And this is the bottom of the deck, all right? So we're looking at the bottom of the deck. So actually, maybe I should switch it this way. So I was, here it is. This would have been a gate. Useless by itself, but the first player to use the gate gets a fame point. That would have counted towards our mission objective. But you need a, another gate for it to go to. So you need two gates. So here's a second one and a third one. Oh, here we go. This was the smuggler's den. Okay, it's an outwall place, but the smuggler's den is where the sellsword spawns. So if I would have moved next to the sellsword, I think it's like one or 2,000. Uh, place 1,000 on this card and take the... So as an actor, a player adjacent may place 1,000 on this card to take the card from the current owner. And basically, I control the ship. And I get to move up to seven spaces a turn, and I get to have the sellsword attack one adjacent ship with 2d6 blasters. And if it's destroyed by its owner or while it has no owner, no credits are rewarded. Um, obviously, it can be destroyed. Uh, but uh, the cool thing is I use this guy, and uh, if he destroys even the Enforcer, uh, he gets a bounty on him, but uh, I don't get a bounty on me. And if he destroys something, I get all the credits and all the fame points for the destruction. So it all, it benefits me in every way possible. Um, but he needed to spawn. And so it would have taken three more tiles to finally get his tile. And that's what I was looking for. I was really desperately wanting to get him out. And uh, that's what I was trying to get. It was a smuggler's den, and I was trying to find these. Now, I would have needed a second gate, and right there it is. So four more tiles needed to spawn. Uh, we, I mean, that's... There's still quite a bit left, um, but uh, yeah, uh, that's what I was looking for, folks. <clears throat> so that's just luck. Uh, there's another dead world. There's this crazy gravity world here. This one, if you let the gravity take you too much, you go into the black hole and die. <laughs> uh, um, debris field. This is a strange anomaly. Look at that, that's a planet called Tig. Um, here's another lawful planet that was part of the trade route. This is a gate that's broken, and so you can go into it, but it just randomly, you have to roll where you randomly show up. Here's another planet on the trade route. So that would have kept the merchant a little more busy. And yeah, so, so anyways, um, Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I apologize for the few spots where I had to really look at the rules. Um, I just wanted to get it right. Uh, I apologize if I got... I, I think there was a few spots where I, um, I missed something, but then I caught it later. And I'm sure um, I'm going to get 30 comments uh, about that. Uh, but that's okay. I have done the same thing to other people when I'm watching their videos. Uh, but I do believe I caught the things... Uh, anyways, um, definitely going to keep trying. Uh, let's, I'm going to keep crying and trying. <laughs> um, how many negative points can I go before it's worthless? Uh, let me just say this. <clears throat> you saw how the NPC just scores points magically. Um, if I were to somehow win and get 15 points, he's probably going to be at 14 or 13. And, uh... I, the amount of points I get for my win 
is the difference between my score and his score. So if I only get one point for my win, I have to win three times to make up for this minus three deficit I just got. So I don't think I can get more than a minus six uh, before it's just unsurmountable. Um, is it possible I could somehow, you know, oh, actually, there's this one mission where you have to score five points in one turn. I guarantee you I'll, I'll get, see, that's a five-point swing right there. Because <laughs> as soon as you win, you win. <laughs> um, so uh, they don't even get to take their turn. So I guess that's a five-point game right there. Um, uh, I didn't even think about that. So that does help. That helps a lot if you can pull it off. Um, anyways, we'll worry about that some other time. Thank you for watching. Stay awesome.